Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, unfortunately for all of you, and I guess fortunately for us. Uh, my brother's over there beating his chest like a silverback gorilla, which he kind of resembles to a certain extent. Uh, yeah, especially without the beard guy, huh? The beard guy, the beard guy. Beard uh, this guy. week we are throwing it back to, oh yeah, beard die. Yeah, I got that. Uh, we're throwing it back to high school. High school is yeah. like senior high year, school. 1987. Nice. Yeah. We're going biceps. Muscles. We're going huge, baby. Huge. Everybody in this thing is jacked, including oh. uh, the namesake. Uh, we're not talking about predators. We're not talking about prey. We're not talking about the predator. We're not talking about predator two. We are talking about the original Arnold Schwarzenegger, the man, the, the like the action hero. Right. This is like the quintessential eighties action sci-fi film. It is one million percent. Like, this is 1987's Predator. And we'll yeah. And we're back. It's another episode of the Manson Brothers Show. I'm three quarters of the greatest tag team of all time. Your host, Stone Manson. This is my bro, uh, the one and only Carlos, a.k.a. Skull Manson. And this week, dude, let's just jump right into it because this thing. Yeah, man. We, we let's get into this Predator this thing. Let, let's just predator. preface this. So this came out the year after Aliens came out, which Aliens, uh, great action sci-fi film. Yep. The difference is what it doesn't have in what aliens doesn't have uh that predator has uh is a lot of beefcake in there well uh, aside from ralston was i was just gonna say r- right i was just gonna say aside from our friend mark ralston who's jacked out of his mind in a- aliens it doesn't have the the, the 80s action hero physique factor no. that this one does let's just run it down for you real quick we got starting at the top the king himself you got arnold right king arnold. himself Second, Carl Weathers, Apollo right. Creed himself, jacked Famously out of his mind. As, as Chubbs from Happy Gilmore, like his biggest role yep. aside from this, and right? Com- and Combat Carl. And much oh, like yeah, Combat yeah. Carl, in Toy Story, he loses an arm in this one, too. But once again, folks, if you haven't seen the movie, although I'm sure you all have, we're going to spoil right, it for you. He, he, I, does he lose a hand in everybody? Yeah. Does he lose a hand in Happy yeah. Gilmore? Yeah. Yeah, it must be a running a more running thing with Carl Weathers. I don't know. He hasn't lost it in the Mandalorian yet, so we'll see. So anyway, you got your Carl Weathers there. You got your Jesse Ventura there. Jesse the Body Ventura. Former governor of Minnesota. He's the governor of Minnesota, McMahon. He's the governor of horseshit. Anyway, he 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 likes tortillas and scrambled eggs. He lives less than six months a year in the contiguous United States. He's going yeah. off the fucking rails, by the way. He is oh. out of his mind anymore. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Anyway, so you got you got your Jesse the body. Then after that, you got Sonny Landon from 48 Hours, yes. who, who's in comparison, crazy. right, yes. who's ripped as shit, but in comparison, looks like an out-of-shape old lady compared to the other Dude. guys, but but he's ripped out of his mind, I'd too. I'd give my eye teeth to look like Billy in this oh. movie, and uh, he looks like a putz compared to the rest of right. the guys. Then you got the guy that plays uh, Pancho Chavez. He's smaller, but he's also ripped. The only kind of odd man out is Shane Black, uh, better known as a director and a writer. Uh, yep. Great guy. He plays Hawkins, who's kind of the radio guy in the bookworm. But he's still even in shape. You know, he's not jacked. Dude, he's still in good shape. I love the fact that you call him the bookworm because he's got the yeah. absolute worst pair of glasses in the history of cinema that he wears. It's like it's straight out of Harry Carey 101. Oh you know, man! Girls make passes with guys with big glasses. It's like a, it's a <laughs> moniker that's been going on for years. A couple of and, delicious and he's Budweisers. The, oh, hey, get a load of a guy with some Budweisers. Budweisers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so anyway, <laughs> so you've got all and and mind you, playing the predator, you've got Kevin Peter Hall, who's I think it's Kevin Peter Hall. Well, I let's think, talk about playing huge. the predator. By the way, let's get on. So let's start with that. that. Yeah. So yeah. a little bit of Hollywood lore, uh, brother dear, who was originally slated to play the predator? Well, I want to give the people five seconds to think about this, and I want to hear some comments, and then I want to let you tell them who was supposed to be the original predator, if anyone can even believe this. I'm sure a lot of people know this, but I so watched the, him last night in a little-known movie called The Legionnaire. 
if you remember I that love that one. movie. So, so that, yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> so it was, in fact, the muscles from Brussels himself, Mr. Jean-Claude Van Damme. So you notice how I say that in my thick Chicago accent, Jean-Claude right. Van Damme. Van Damme. Van Damme. They, they probably figured he was too small to be anything else in this movie, by the way. Right. So, well, they hired him originally for his uh, gymnastic ability. Now, uh, Van Damme had not yet broke big. He still hadn't. Bloodsport had not come out. Uh, he had done one other movie where uh, I think it was called 315 Moment of Truth, where he had a small role as like a Russian karate guy. Uh, savant, but anyway, savant, the fun. Savant, yeah. Savant alert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, anyway, <laughs> that's okay. Hey, man, you got to be a savant for something. So, because uh, it yes. certainly ain't math. Anyway, ain't nothing else. That's for no. sure. No. So, and uh, so anyway, he gets on set. Van Damme thinks because the name of the movie is Predator and he's playing the Predator, he thinks he's the star. But he doesn't get it until he gets on set and he sees that not only is he not the star, he's a villain. And not only is he not the villain, he has to be hidden behind a mask and a costume. And well, I guess at the time, the mask looked ridiculous. It did not look like what it was. And they had to spend another million dollars to make the Predator look the way he looked. But anyway, Van Damme walks. They hire Kevin Peter Hall, who was actually a better uh, thing because he, he was right. matched size for size with Schwarzenegger. Well, I'm going to talk about one of the things that disappointed me about this film on the rewatch. And, and I'm shocked to hear you say that Van Damme was hired for his gymnastics ability. Because when the Predator is... Cloaked. Camouflage, which I'll get into yeah. that later about right. how much BS that is. Uh, <laughs> he's he's literally sprinting around like he's doing a, a 200 meters in the Olympics, right? Right. He's, yeah, he's, he's doing all kinds of yes, swinging you know, through the trees, trucking around. Yeah, like he's a cross between you know Carl Lewis and a spider monkey or something like that. Right. Like the dude is nothing but agile. He can fly, and then the minute the cloaking thing wears off, he looks like Big John Stud. Had it had sex with a baby rhinoceros or something. He just does a lot of posing, like well, know, and, and he and that kind body, of body. He's moving yeah, around, lumber, and like, it's like yeah. lumbering. It's like what it's happened to the guy that was jumping around right. like a you like yeah. an animal, right? You know? Yeah. So so that was a, a bit of a disappointment because he's just a lumbering oaf once he gets out out in the open, and they do not portray him that way whatsoever. In, no. in you know when he's but I close will say when they finally reveal him later on, very cool monster, look great. Oh, uh, you know, particularly when he's still got the helmet oh. on. Yeah, very you cool. The dreads like that is badass. Yeah, it's cool. So Whoever came up with that, and I don't, I don't know who designed it. I'm sure yeah. one of you can enlighten us as to who designed the creature. Whoever did it, phenomenal job. So not only so this movie has the most over the top at to the to the time explosions automatic oh, weapons fire yeah. i mean everything is 80s generation x big totally. right yeah. because everything had to be huge in the 80s right and the great scene between at the beginning between schwarzenegger yeah and carl weathers where they lock arms and they show the bicep <laughs> shot and yeah. arnold now arnold had actually lost some weight since conan the barbarian and way some other smaller films, than conan but he still oh. bicep is as big as a fucking softball and carl weathers bicep is not too much smaller no. and i mean carl weathers is jacked out of his yeah. mind in this thing i found it amazing how they set the shots up literally like every other shot is to show how big arnold's arms are whether yeah, it's holding a, holding an automatic a, weapon, or when he's lifting the truck, pulling the a vine. Yeah, yeah. They're, him and Carl pulling Weathers are pulling on a. Yeah, they're pulling a like, vine. All, and, I mean, and, and I, you, you literally feel bad for everyone else in the movie. Most of whom are huge, who, right? Who probably like, worked out for six months to get in shape for it, and compared well, to Arnold, they're like. And let's talk about Jesse Body Ventura. He was famous yeah. for having massive arms in wrestling. Yeah, like, I mean he's six four, about two eighty. I mean, he Jesse was superstar was Graham and like Hulk Hogan size oh, arms. Absolutely. Right? He wore yeah, the feather absolutely. boa. He had the whole deal. Yeah. Like he was, he a was huge. And right. He, and at this point in time, he was Arnold. he was mostly doing commentary for uh New York WWE right. uh as a foil to Vince McMahon, who was and totally. Gorilla Monsoon, who were the good guys. So Mc, he wanted to do this movie, and Vince McMahon told him no. And Jesse Ventura had the smarts to say, "Well, screw you! I'm doing the Schwarzenegger movie." Yeah, well, and great, by heard. the way. And by and by the way, let's you know, I mean, Jesse gets made fun of a lot. We're already making fun of him, but 
You want to yeah. talk about a renaissance man. This guy, he was a frogman, and then he was a world champion, and he became a great yeah, I mean, polar commentator, can't... McMahon. And, he was a governor. And then the governor of Minnesota. <laughs> Like, yeah, so I you mean, can say what you want about Jesse Ventura, like him or not like him. He's a legit guy. I mean, the guy was a he's, Navy he's SEAL, Arnold, the right? governor. I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah, him and Arnold had, except, you know, Arnold was in the military too. He wasn't a SEAL, but right. still, very similar pathways. Um, and he's, got, I mean, he's, he's great in this movie. He's in it for a uh, short time, but the shit he delivers is on point. He every probably time. has the best of all the Schwarzenegger lines that are in there. He probably has the most memorable, best line in the film, which I heard was an ad ad lib where uh, Pancho says to him, hey, Blaine, you're bleeding. And of course, the famous line is, I ain't got time to bleed. And there you have it, right? <laughs> so the story I heard was I that was an ad lib. Afterwards, though, he says, you got time to duck? You're yeah, right, which is a like, great, oh. another <laughs> great line, right? Yeah. This thing's great. And, of course, Arnold is running around with his master punster bit, you know, stick oh, around dude. when he nails the guy. Seriously, it's, it's almost, like, it's so 80s. You just want oh. to drop your head and be like, oh, my yeah. God, man. I mean, it's, how many it's more a, of these can you come up with? Yeah. So, anyway, they, uh, so to Arnold's t- It's time yeah, to right. get blown. You know, it's like, uh, you, could, you couldn't make these things up. <laughs> somebody did, I guess. But uh, anyway. He's, he's like right off uh, Wolf, Wolf Castle in uh, in The Simpsons. Where, where oh, where yeah, yeah, said. yeah. Yeah, Rainier Wolf Castle. <laughs> Ice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, so get back to the movie. So yeah, well. the, movie t- the movie starts out as a rescue mission, which is really cool. So it's almost like. Two different movies. It is totally like that, right? Like, <laughs> hmm. so, so anyway, who comes up with these classic battle plans? So uh, I, and they're hired by Carl Weathers, who has some history with Schwarzenegger. So bring Schwarzenegger in. Who's a dick, yes. by the way? We yeah, right, right? and he's a dick, and he's a dick. He, he, and, he's and, he's the smarmy fuck in the group. Like, uh, what's his face from Aliens? Paul R- right. uh, Reiser. You know, yeah, like Paul I mean, Reiser. He's was. just a jacked up version Duke, of him, right? And we forgot to mention the cast: Bill Duke, who oh, was like dude, right. one of the, in my opinion. You know, so I, I love, as you know, movies from the early seventies and all that. I mean, you got Bill Duke, Car Wash, and all these other great films. A great director too, Payback. He was great in that. I mean, Bill Duke's oh. great in everything. So in this one, he and plays Bill Duke gets some classic shit in this. Movie. Oh like, man, he, and he he's gets... so intense looking, yes. and probably like. What would you say holds the record for sweating the most on oh, camera dude, while, like, when not working out? He he has the most beaded sweat of any human being on the history of cinema. I, I and he's one got of my buckets. Yeah, he's got the disposable the razor. Time. He's always clean and keep. And so him and Jesse Ventura are like thick as thieves in it. I, you know, one of my bucket list things. I would love to do a movie with Bill Duke. I would love yeah. to either act with him or be directed by him. I think that would be awesome. So Bill, if you by chance cool watch this, too, man. Like, yeah. his look is so And badass. I like the way him and Carl Weathers are, like, button heads, you know? And, it's, he and, and like scorpion move on him. Yeah, and, he, and, and yeah. Bill Duke totally, like, doesn't like him from the get-go, you know? Yep. And yep. so they, they figure out that they find this other team of Green Berets that went in there, and they're like, what are these guys doing here? And Weathers like, oh, I don't know. What do you think about it? But you know the fucker knows, right? You know he right. knows. So they're trying to figure out why they're hung upside down and skinned, like, why and and all they find all these shells Which, by the way casing. that's a very for the 80s especially very graphic effed up part of the movie like that's graphic dude you stumble upon these three skinned yeah. alive guys and they're all green like you said they're green berets from fort bragg and it's like holy shit and it still looks good today done? the effect looks great right still Absolutely. even by today's Absolutely. standard yep. so schwarzenegger and the rest of the team are starting to figure out that maybe something's going on. Except so they, for Carl Weathers, who refuses to believe what's going on. Well, Although, because he's in on it. Kinda, here's what well, I was going to say. You kind of get the hint that he actually knows what's going on. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out what's up, right? Like Exactly. And yeah. so they... they uh, they go to they find the gorilla camp, right? And they, they start, you know, long story short, they blow the shit out of it, right? Except... Wait, so here's the part that's funny, right? So... There's all this explosions and like automatic gunfire out the wazoo. Schwarzenegger kicks this door down, and there's two guys casually rifling through paperwork. Like all that's going on, and that's what you guys are gonna do. You're gonna just casually. Yeah. Oh, he he found the accountants. That's yeah, he's like, 
Hey, Phil, I found the gas bill. Did you pay this thing? <laughs> the Schwartz. And by the way, should we should we mention now about how if you and I or anybody else for that matter wrote this movie today, oh, it dude, would, was, in, they would kick us out of the studio, blacklist us. <laughs> this is perfect 80s like stereotyping to the nth degree, right? So, so, so if you're you a person got... that's sick of being politically correct, watch this movie, watch this right? Because it has First something off, to offend everyone. <laughs> absolutely. Every single person can be offended by this. Particularly, there, there's a lot of uh, homosexual slurs. There's a lot yeah. of the other stuff. And then we get Billy, who is, of course, the Native, Native American, American tracker. Who, who who knows just by kind of looking around and sensing the vibe with his Native Americanness exactly what's going on out in the wild. See, now, uh, if I was going to write this, I'd have one of the guys go, hey, Billy, or she'd be like, how, how am I supposed to know? I don't know nothing about tracking. I grew tracking. up in Brooklyn. How am I supposed <laughs> yeah, I to know up, that? I grew, up, I grew up in Brooklyn. Right, exactly. I, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very, it's very politically incorrect. And so if you're easily offended by this stuff, you're probably not going to like it. But as our friends uh, Dino Clark and Tony Thomas like to say, relax, relax. Yeah, it's a movie, exactly right? right. It's and by a movie. the way, now's the perfect time to throw some shout outs to all of our people who come and comment on the show every yes. week. By the way, just want to say how much we love you guys. And, and we really, yeah. really appreciate the comments. That's why we always get back. Uh, what I love is that you guys teaching us stuff. You're teaching. Oh my God. You're, you're, we yeah. love it. We love it because you give us Half information time, we don't have. Half the time, everybody commenting knows way more than we do about these movies, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, they figure out we're just pulling this out of our ass anyway. There we'll give some shout-outs to uh, Let's Go Horror Cat Dad. We've got Daryl. Yeah, Chris, Chris Paydar. Chris Paydar. Dave uh, Wytak. If, if, we, if you guys haven't heard your name, you will hear it. Azo. Yeah, but, but man, keep keep the comments coming. Did we, we say Horror what? Cat Dad. you say him? I did yeah. say Horror Cat Dad. Yeah, yeah. I got How about uh, Jer Jeremy Horn? Oh, Jeremy Landis. Time, man. We're, we're oh, we double, did? We're okay. Well, there's two up. Jeremys. Yeah. There's two. There's Horn and Landis. I they're all. I think they're one and the same, actually. I think, I you think, think they're pulling one over on us? That I wouldn't be hard. Um, right. But yeah, seriously, right. guys, thank you so much. We yeah, love Yeah, thank you very much. So please and hit like, like. Please hit subscribe. Leave us a comment. We love interacting. Yeah. Anyway, back the to the film. quality of what you leave is, is awesome. So ba back to Predator. So um, then uh, so Shane Black, he's the first one in the team to get waxed. And... Uh, that, now they're starting to figure something out because they find his body and, and Schwarzenegger is like, how come they didn't take his weapon? How come they didn't take his radio? Right. They just leave yeah. his body how hanging naked cauterized? upside down. Right. Like right. No, right. No... Yeah. That happens with Jesse Ventura. So right. Jesse Ventura gets this big exploding chest wound and Bill Duke's like, or uh, Carl Weathers is like the wounds cauterized already. Or one of them says it. And they're like, what weapon can do that? And, and and by the way, Jesse's death leads to one of the iconic moments oh, of, of the man. film where Bill Duke clears the, the forest with the minigun, which, so cool. which was extremely influential on pop culture and video yeah. games because no one had ever really seen a minigun before, right? No, now, not, not on the screen play, like that. Right. If you play Doom or if you play Fortnite or if you play any of these first person kind of shooters, the minigun is like the badass weapon, you know, that you can just kind of clear yeah. everything out. And I think yeah. this was the first, you know, and, and yeah, and he just rips it, and then he goes, wow. "I saw something. Nothing could have survived that. Two thousand rounds that at, at that yeah, range. Right. Nothing could have survived." So then, well, that's when they says, find the nothing on earth on earth survived that. Yes, yeah. So then the girl finds the glowing blood of the um, of the alien predator. rights of the predator. Sorry, the predator. You, you really and, can't call him an alien because it would no. be confusing. No. And so then they know now they're being hunted. So now they've figured it out and, and they're trying to tell, convince Carl Weathers, Hey, you do what you want, but we're being hunted and we're going right. to, we're going to go and fight back again the, the, before we go anywhere. So they're going to make a stand. Right. And then Billy, which I think is one of the coolest parts in the film. Uh, so Sonny Landon, the tracker stands up there and he's all spooked out. He's real quiet. And he turns around and says, we're all going to die. Yep. Die. And it's yep. just a really spooky, haunting part. And then he has that cool scene where he rips his shirt off, takes the knife, bleeds himself, he goes ready for battle. And what's cool is you don't really even see him get killed. You hear him get killed. Yep. Right? And I then you see that think... cool scene of the predator ripping his spine out. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh. And 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 by the way, that's the first time you see him kind of clean 
yeah. you know, the skull and have the trophies. Yeah, he's like field dressing his trophies, you but know. But one of the things I, I think that led to, and, you know, you can say what you want about the rest of the movies, but there's a scene in Predators where you have the guy from the Yakuza who does the standoff yes. with the samurai sword and the Predator yeah. with the with the hand gimmick, which yeah. is also very cool. It's very, a, it was very cool. It's a and one I think on it's one Hen- standoff. Yeah, I think it's like, Henry Sonata who plays that yeah, character. Yeah, so too. It's really cool. But it's like this glory moment, right? And that's the same thing you get from Philly. Is like, yeah. all right, man, there's no more running. I'm not running anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, let's get at it. And that's a that's a super cool moment in the movie. Yeah, even because it's like that. that's a that's it's being a man's man. So Absolutely. you know, that's a see, that was what was great about 80s movies. 80s movies said, even in 70s movies for that matter matter too. Right. We, I know we just had the great Jim Brown pass away. And there's a great uh, there's a great meme of like Jim Brown and and Jim Kelly and um, Richard Roundtree uh, from one of the early '70s black exploitation movies, and it said when it was cool to be masculine, right? And the yeah. '80s was that way too. It was okay to be masculine. It wasn't toxic and all this nonsense they try to feed I, you. I, today. I think one of the cool parts about that too, and and hopefully there's people on this conversation who are bringing it back, but. Um, you know, guys from back then who were legit action movie guys, they were fucking legit badasses, right? Like, I mean, yeah, Chuck Lee Norris Martin and Lee Van Cleef and Chuck Norris and, and right. Charles Bronson and guys like that. Lynn Eastwood, they, they were legit tough guys. James right. Garner, these guys went yeah. to war, you know? Right. You know, they'd been well, in Korea. To your point, been Jim in Korea Brown. or World War II or Vietnam. And, I mean, yeah, you know, Jim, I mean, or, or they yeah. were sports badasses like Fred Williamson. Oh, it's Fred Williamson. Right. That's who else was on the picture. Great Fred Williamson yeah, and Jim Brown hammer. and guys. Yeah, man, the hammer. Guys like that. I mean, they were tough guys. Well, they I, weren't just I, actors pretending. You to be had tough to be guys. believable as a tough guy, right? Like now it kind of gets shoved down your throat as a tough guy, even if you're not. I don't think guys do an admirable job. Yeah, but, I mean, you're an actor. Then, you're an actor. You know, look, it's a difference when you see. Look. When you see, let's take the Expendables, for example, right? They're all good. When you see Jason Statham and you think, wow, he does some cool stuff. But standing next to Randy Couture, who is a a grade A, legit, Hall of Fame, ass-kicking badass. And would dismantle him in 15 seconds. Yeah, he would, (laughs) Randy would bat his eye and he would turn into a little pile of freeze-dried dust. (laughs) That would be that. So yeah, you have that that guy well, factor. Hey, listen, in the movie. Carl Weathers. What, Carl yeah, Weathers, man. Was a Carl NFL Weathers. Football player. He's man's yeah, man. Ventura, I, I don't know? care. You're a man. I don't care. Gay, straight, otherwise, it doesn't matter. It it was cool to be masculine. There's nothing wrong with it, right? We we try to be. We fall way short of the mark, but it's okay. But anyway, it was the '80s, and it was cool to be masculine. You know, hopefully that'll come back someday. And, and, and this thing is just that, loaded movie, with testosterone. Tons of explosions. Oh. Tons of huge guns, tons of like it was just guns and, and explosions and yeah blood through the whole, the whole thing time. and a great story. I mean, great writing. Schwarzenegger figures out if he camouflages himself with mud, the predator can't see him because it can't sense the body heat. Well, you want well, to get into your cloaking thing? Totally by accident. He he yeah. winds up falling down. Brilliant, right? And he knows the predator's coming, and dude, that is honestly. Like we we talk a lot about lazy writing in movies all the time. Like yeah. that was some genius writing right there. It, like that. it really was, especially for an action movie. Yeah, it you know was what? great, speaking of, man. Speaking of genius writing, let's get to this week's viewer email. Oh, let's. Here we go. This one comes to us from. Uh, this is Lance from Bridgeport, Illinois. Oh wow, well. and, and he's coming home to us. Home of the, uh, home of the dailies. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yes, home of the home of the dailies. Uh, I wonder if any daily has ever gotten a ticket for rolling a stop sign in Bridgeport. In Bridgeport, I, I doubt yeah. it. You think? Um, I doubt I it. I would doubt it. No offense to the no. dailies. No, uh, you were actually great for the city. It's gone nothing but downhill since the dailies were in. in, in yeah, you know, rich power, daily, as it were. Uh, so anyway, we'll, take, we're I, not to get political. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, great show. Uh, love watching it. Love Predator. What is your favorite Predator weapon of all the weapons the Predator uses? That's a freaking great question. So I know mine right uh, off the bat. I'll let you Yeah, I, okay. I like, so off the top of my head, I like the, the, the two spikes. blades. Yeah, the spikes that he has because uh, he's got all these high-tech weapons, right? 
But yeah. then he's got a very primitive, you know, like a caveman. Oh, that kick ass moment when he goes around Arnold's head. With yeah. The, uh, with the spike. Yeah, it was on, really on cool. Either side. Yeah, really cool. And what I like about that is when push came to shove and he figures out that he's not dealing with the typical human that he was, that this guy's a formidable adversary. He takes off all his high tech stuff and just wants to face him with blades and fists. And I yeah. and I like that up close. I and, love that part like, about that's, it too. Yeah, that's real warrior stuff, and I, I thought yeah. that was well, great. Like, so that's mine. He's a hunter, and and, yeah. and even they even at times say, "Look, if you don't have a weapon, he's not going after you." Right, exactly. But, but, right. You don't have he's a, a hunter, and when he realizes this guy's legit, he, he's he's peeling it all, and, and we're going mano a mano. Right. You know, if you pretty- don't have a weapon, he's not going after you because there's no sport in it. Which I thought right. again was genius writing. You're not Very dealing with so. a mindless killing machine. This this guy is. Oh, calculating no. yeah. and methodical and has some sense if you can call it that of honor uh, you know well really. and, and if you recall there's a point where arnold's got him trapped and he's luring him in and he gets there and he yeah. kind of looks around and he's like uh-uh, hey, and he, smart. Goes, he goes around but arnold about, gives right? him the old okie doke that's right uh i will go and i don't think he uses it in this film um but i love the uh the kind of the kind of mesh um, blanket thing that, that, oh, gets that net shot thing, yeah, and then it just constricts until basically you ooze out all of yeah, that. yeah. So that's that would a be cool my... one too. Well, and it comes to play in one of the Alien versus Predator movies because the the alien gets it em- emblazoned in his alien head, you yeah, know, kind of the, the the print of it. So um, one of the things, although to piggyback on that question, and thank you very much, Lance. That's a great question. Uh, and by the way, keep the emails coming. We love them. Uh, this is going to lead me to my one beef with uh, the the predator or predator or whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. So so this guy's got he's got the spikes. He's like nine feet tall. Uh, he yeah. weighs somewhere upwards of like what five hundred pounds. Uh, clearly he's agile. He can run. Um, he's got he's got the shoulder turret, which is like the yeah. entire like that that's an entire movie where they're trying to get the shoulder turret thing right so that he can just lay waste to everybody. Yeah. Um, he, he's got a, just an arsenal of weaponry, and yet he also can be invisible somehow. Like that. Yeah, I mean, it's a little a much. <laughs> like, there's the, the I mean, how much and, sport is that? Is there in that? But does it does it does it invoke the thought that he shows up on planets where he's actually minuscule compared to some of the things he's hunting? Because because on Earth, I mean, he's clearly got the physical advantage and obviously the technological advantage. He does not need to be invisible the whole freaking No, time. and and really quickly before my computer shuts down and runs out of power, <laughs> on that comment, I, I really like that you pointed that out because I, I think it's, it is kind of a, an overlook on their thing. I get it why they did it because they don't want to reveal the predator right away. So in that yeah. sense, it was really good writing because it was a good way to not reveal the monster but still give you glimpses of them. So it was cool. But like you said, not not very much sport in it. So when and it makes that, you feel a little bit like he's chicken shit. So anyway, yeah, kind, uh, yeah, right, kind of. That's I mean, it's a legit, it's a legit beef. What do you guys think? You tell us. Do you think it's bullshit? He was able to cloak himself, or do you think it was cool? You tell us. But well, on, on that, that note, note, it's yeah. time to take it home. Apparently, yeah. So, so great him, movie, guys. Watch it again. It's just a, it's just a fun film. Uh, you know, please. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends, leave us a comment. We love interacting. Visit us at mansonbrothers.com. We'll get, get you a signed picture or a t-shirt. Blu-rays you can buy on amazon.com. We don't have any more, but mansonbrothers.com. We'll get you hats. We got t-shirts. We got pictures. We got mugs, I think. We're actually uh, sold out of stuff. Can you believe that? We're sold that? out of stuff. Yeah, right. People like us. Go figure. <laughs> so until next week. We'll see you next week, and we'll be back for more on another edition of the Manson Brothers Show. Next week. See you later, shitty pants. Check it out.